Hello everyone and welcome to puzzle solving number 10. In this series, the video is divided into three different stages. Number one, evaluation, where I evaluate the initial position of a puzzle. Number two, calculation, where I start using candidate moves to find myself in the complicated new position I just dropped into. And number three, a little bit of a summary to digest all the information and the key highlights of what we learned. So, I haven't seen this position before other than when I was getting ready to record this, meaning that I will find out about the answer together with you. So I'm going to share how I reach this conclusion and I'm going to walk you through what I think. So, here we have this position, we're playing with the black pieces, so it's black to play. And as I said, like 30 seconds ago, when you're just dropped into a position like this, you have to give yourself a little bit of context. I don't know what's going on, so I'm going to start evaluating. This is the first stage of the, the video. Evaluation, you can, you can use many factors, different aspects of this whole position. Uh, I usually use material first, king safety second, and activity third. It doesn't have to be in that order. I mix them around throughout this series. But just for the sake of this video, I'm going to start taking a look at material. So I have three, four pawns, black, sorry, white has five pawns. So already there in terms of pawns, we're not doing very well. Rook, rook, bishop, bishop, queen, queen. So white is winning in material if my maths are correct, because white has one more point in material. Now, that's not the most important thing about a chess position, but it does guide you towards what kind of move you're looking for. If it was equal material, maybe you're looking more of a more for a positional type of move, rather a strategic type of move rather than a tactical one. But because material is imbalanced and king safety, which is the next thing I'm going to evaluate, I can already tell maybe an, an important factor. I already know that this is a tactical position. OK, so king safety wise, I think that my king is safer than white's king. So me being black, why do I think that? Well. This king is more likely to get checked. Maybe rook takes h4 is a motive. Maybe bishop b5 is a motive. But all of these motives, all of these ideas are popping into my head. And all of those seem pretty scary for, for white. Um, on the other hand, I think this king on g8 may come to h8. And, and for instance, let's say white managed to give a check along this diagonal somehow, which is not possible so far. Queen e6, knight, queen takes e6. Um, there's always king h8. So all of these general kind of superficial type of evaluating uh, king safety and activity, all of these things may not be accurate, but they give you an idea. And that's all that matters, because once you have the idea, now we can move on to the second stage of this video, which is calculation. In order to calculate precisely and, and in an organized way, we do something known as candidate moves. We use candidate moves. And candidate moves are pretty much making a list. You, you make a list of the, the moves that come to your mind. You have to look at the most forcing type of, types of moves. And once you have that list, you're quite confident that the best move is within those moves. So from a position in which you say, oh, there are a million possi possibilities. Once you make the list, it narrows down to maybe four, maybe five. So I'm going to start by looking at rook takes h4. That's a very forcing move. When we're looking at candidate moves, we have to go through CCTV, which is checks, captures, threats, and vulnerabilities. So look at moves that create threats, pretty much. Checks, captures, threats, and vulnerabilities. Rook takes h4 is a very forcing move because it's check. Bishop b5 is also a very forcing move because it threatens rook takes h4 because this is now pinned. Queen h3 is a very forcing move. G5 is a very forcing move. And I think after that, maybe queen g4 is a very forcing move. Okay, so I have one, sorry, one, two, three, four. And that's it, five maybe. Five candidate moves. Out of those moves, I'm quite confident that the best move is, uh, is within those, sorry. And if you go to the future of this video and you see the answer of this puzzle, May, you, you're going to see that probably I'm going to be correct. If I'm not correct, you're not, I'm not going to applaud this video. I would be embarrassed of myself. But I'm quite sure that one of those moves is indeed the best move. Now, notice that it was very important for me to not start calculating right away. 
many of you would make the mistake of saying rook takes h4 and before you move on to the next possible candidate move you start calculating rook takes h4 and you, you just take five minutes 10 minutes that becomes 20 minutes and all of a sudden you have to make a move in your game and because you spend all of that time it wasn't organized you should have taken a look at all the possibilities first spend a reasonable amount of time for each of them and then in that way maybe you can now make a decision of whether you should spend even more time in one in one move or or well depending on the position okay back to this the first move i'm going to calculate is rook takes h4 because it's very forcing if white goes king g1 i already see a motive of playing rook h1 king takes h1 queen h3 and queen g2 is unstoppable so this is going to be checkmate david what oh sorry david white is going to take the, the rook back why are you calculating that well first of all i like calculating all the consequences that motive was worth uh noticing i think it may come back to another variation and uh yeah it's it's important to to notice these things so rook takes h4 bishop takes h4 i start getting a little bit worried because all of a sudden it's not obvious what black should do for example queen g4 already loses to queen d8 uh, bishop f8 and queen g5 stopping queen g2 so once again rook takes h4 bishop takes h4 queen g4 loses to queen d8 so it's not queen g4 bishop e5 white has king h1 king g1 well okay king, king h1 not because of queen h3 king g1 i suspect queen g4 is winning but what worries me a lot after bishop e5 is bishop g3 to which I have no... I don't seem to have a good response. I don't seem to have a good response. There's this idea of playing bishop takes g3, that's a very forcing move, in which black, sorry, in which white cannot take with the pawn because of queen, sweet, queen c2 and queen g2, and there must be a mate in that position. Or maybe there isn't, because of king g4, h5, king g5, queen takes g3. That's pretty crazy. Long variation, wrong variation. So I'm not going to continue calculating that. I think that's enough for rook takes h4. Now I'm going to uh, sorry, calculate bishop e5. I evaluate that as a little bit unclear. And rather than spending a ton of time in rook takes h4, I'm going to start calculating another move. And maybe it turns out that it's 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 winner winning quickly qu quickly with bishop e5. So bishop e5, I'm going to see what's going on. Already I start liking this move. Because if bishop takes e5, rook takes h4 check, white is losing. And that motive that we talked about before with king g1 comes back. Rook h1 or queen g4 first. But either way, bishop e5, bishop takes e5 is not the best move for white. That's losing after rook takes h4. So that's already nice. It's not obvious what white should do. How does white stop this rook takes h4? Uh, checkmating threat because after rook takes h4 king g1 rook h1 is the motive that we we have talked about so much what does white do bishop b5 i have to start making a very good effort for my opponent uh to find candidate moves so candidate moves for my opponent i think so far that king g1 is probably the biggest question and i say probably because i'm not sure uh rook takes h4 is still there and after bishop takes h4 queen g4 bishop g3 bishop takes g3 i'm quite sure that white will give a thousand checks and in fact there is queen d8 king g7 queen d4 check which forces a queen trade and that's worrying all of a sudden so bishop e5 king g1 what should white so what should black play what should i play the black Rook takes h4, bishop takes h4. Now I'm looking again, once again, I'm thinking about queen g4, I'm thinking about queen h3, but all of them allow queen d8. And I'm not happy to allow that. So maybe the answer is along the lines of rook takes h4, sorry, bishop e5. King g1, rook takes h4, bishop takes h4, queen g4, bishop g3, and in that position, if you have that position in mind, 
Bishop takes g3. Queen d8 is kind of the only question white can pose. There's nothing else that white can do. If not, if you take this, of course, queen takes g3 and queen g2 is mate. If you move up the rook, let's say to c1, they just bishop anywhere, bishop c7. I'm checkmating, I'm taking the queen, I'm winning in a thousand ways. So queen d8, king f7, not king g7, king g7 runs into queen d4, but king f7, and we solve the puzzle. Because white just has one more check with queen d5, and after that, king e7, queen c5, and bishop d6, and finally we get out of the checks. And if queen d4, now we, it's, because it's not check, we can play bishop f4. Check. So we, we, we move the bishop, preventing the queen trade, blocking it, and checkmating on g2. So that's the answer, let's play bishop e5, let's play rook takes h4, play queen g4. And of course, this just blunders the queen. Okay, we're in the third stage of this video where I go through the important moments that arose in this in this puzzle. Arose that happened in this in this puzzle. So first of all, we evaluated the position correctly. I think Black has to do something about the loss of material. We are down a pawn, and it's very easy to evaluate this as a tactical position. Number one, because it's a puzzle, and puzzles by nature are pretty tactical. You have to find the only way to either equalize or win. Usually win. Uh, number two, because... Um, actually, that was number two. That was the first thing. We evaluated the position correctly. The second thing was candidate moves. We, as I said at the beginning, I'm quite happy now. We had or created a list of moves that were attractive to our, to our eye. And they were forcing by nature. So rook takes h4... Bishop b5 and queen g4, queen h3. Queen h3, for instance, I eliminated quickly because it just blunders the queen. I don't see any continuation, so that's short calculation. You're allowed to do that. Queen g4 doesn't threaten anything as direct as rook takes h4 and bishop b5. That's why I prioritized uh, rook takes h4 and bishop b5. And um, we were very organized. Rook takes h4, bishop takes h4. We clearly didn't see anything. Uh, we started calculating a very long line with bishop b5, bishop g3, bishop takes g3. And as soon as you see yourself cal calculating a long line, you should stop. If you still have other moves in your candid moves that you haven't gone through, why would you spend so much time? And that's the reason why we went for bishop b5. And it turns out that we started struggling to find a move for our opponent. And uh, we quickly realized we, we made an effort to, to, to try a candid move, to find a candid move for our opponent, white. And in this case, we came up with king g1, the best move. You have to know this before playing bishop b5, by the way. If you're solving a puzzle and you just think, oh, it's probably bishop b5, and you haven't calculated the whole thing, that's wrong. You don't do that in a real game. In a real game, you'd play bishop b5, and after king g1, you're com confused. You have 10 seconds left in your clock, maybe. I don't know. It's it's It doesn't work like that. I've never done it like that. My coach used to tell me, never do that. So why would you? Um, sorry for that telling off. Uh, bishop e5, king g1, we came up with a candid move, rook takes h4. And uh, after that, we could quickly realize that bishop takes h4, queen g4, bishop g3. Bishop takes g3, queen d8 is a problem. So once again, we're using candid moves for our opponent constantly. More importantly than our moves. Our moves are easier to come up with. But notice how trying to find the best move for your opponent is so difficult. And that's, that's pretty much the... the a way to summarize your whole the whole reason why people are not that good in chess because no one wants to make an effort to try to figure out what your opponent wants to do but once you create that habit of stopping what your opponent wants to do or 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 predicting what your your opponent's resources are and stopping them or 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 profit being using profit access then you're going to become a very strong player so we realize that and we also realized that after bishop takes g3, queen d8, we have king f7, queen d5, king e7. And it's quite easy to understand that uh, black will be able to move this bishop away with check. That's very important. Um, it's not obvious. I've seen this motive before. But it is, it is a question of experience once you see this motive once. It's going to be easier to see it when you're having a real game. That's why it's important to analyze people people's games maybe it's not your game but 
it's important to analyze your own uh, sorry other people's games grandmaster games thank you very much for watching i hope that was instructive i try to upload as many instructive videos as i can so please do subscribe and give a like it supports this channel and it would support me to it would encourage me to uh, continue uploading videos like that like this have a nice day thank you for watching and watch my other videos somewhere over here subscribe subscribe over here watch a video over there